several series in a several series of message. Several messages in a series. I've never been a series preacher. But that's apparently what the Lord wants to do. So uh, that's what I look for. Amen. Amen. I'm being obedient. Makes, makes him happy. Makes me happy. Uh, there are seven statements in the book of John in which Christ says about himself, he says, I am. Now he says that a lot, I'm one thing or another, but there's a few of them in there might that stand out in the way that he, in the English that he used, or what we would call the English that he used, the dictation that he used where he says, I am. And the Lord's going to have me preach, uh, if unless that he leads me otherwise, we're going to be preaching uh, seven different messages because there's seven different times that he says, I am. And I was reading this the other night, and, and you don't have to turn there. We're going to stand for the word in just a minute, but I wanted to share in chapter 18, John 18, verse 6. And they're in the garden, Brother Ronnie, and uh, Judas comes with the soldiers to come and capture him. And Judas identifies him, or they ask, and they said, you know, we're looking for Jesus or whatever. And Jesus says, I am he. I am He. And in verse 6, it says this. It says, As soon, as soon then, as He said unto them, I am He, they, bent, they went backward and fell to the ground. Wow. Now wait a minute. Just His simple words, He says, I am He. He could have said, that's me. But He said, I am He. And the power simply behind his words, Brother Ronnie, drove them backwards to the ground. I mean, you think about that for a moment. Why else would they fall backwards when he said, I am he? Can you imagine that? I have seen the power so strong on people, the power of God, when they walk by with Sister Lindsay, that other people hit the ground. Amen? I mean, I've literally seen it, Brother Dewey, where you walk by somebody, and you like the, they just, boom, they're gone. I mean, and they weren't even praying for them. Even in, what, they, the power was on that person so strong. And yet we have Christ here saying, I am he, and it just wipes this whole group out. Wow. And the power behind that, you can turn to John chapter 6. And, and the power behind those words is simply this, because Christ is everything we need. Amen? Christ is simply everything we need. Brother Mike, he's got all the power. He said, all power is in my name. Now you think about that. And I give my name to you. Everything that we lack in the world, everything that is wrong in the world, rests in the power of Jesus. Amen? Amen. I am He. What do you think about the power of that? I, can you imagine? I mean, the, the, the utterance of, of being in the presence of Christ and Him saying, I am He, and I, I don't know, messes with me. If you are able, turn to John chapter 6, verse, probably we'll start reading in verse 32. Verse 32, we're going to start reading there. If you have that, uh, may, you may stand for the reading of the Word, please. Uh, no greater honor than the Word on this planet. We'll read the Word and we'll pray. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not the bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is He which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto Him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. Amen. Amen. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Amen? Let's bow our heads. Father God, we thank You for this night. We thank You, Lord, that You sent Your Son. Lord, that You are the I Am that I Am. Lord, that Christ could proclaim that He is. Lord, that I am He. Lord, that you, the power rests in His name and all power rests with us, God. I pray tonight, God, as I humble myself, because, Lord, I'm surely not eloquent. Lord, that when I open my mouth, You feel it. Lord, that it would fall on the heart's of these people, God, that you would feed your sheep this night, Father God, because you have a message for them. Lord, and let it feed us, God, your word. 
And we thank you, Lord, for all these things. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated if you can. I am the bread of life. Amen. Now you, you think about that for a minute. The bread of life. Some of this is not new. We, we, we quote around these things or talk about these things uh, all the time. Uh, we talk about Christ being the bread and our nourishment. But the Lord's laid it on my heart to preach these things tonight. Up in verse 26 and 27, And Jesus said to them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Ye seek me not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. He says, labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto, pardon me, give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. I really like that 26. Though where he says, you're not following me because of my miracles, you're following me because that you eat of the bread. Amen. Now right here what we see is Christ is just coming out of feeding the 5,000 with the five loaves and the two fishes. Amen? And so he fed all them. They gathered it up. They had 12 baskets left. Everybody went back to Murray Way. The boys get on the boat. They go across the water. Jesus comes walking on the water to them. They all like get scared to death. Jesus gets on the boat with them. They get to the other side. Morning comes. All the people back on the other side that had eaten the fish and the loaves, they realize that Jesus is gone, so they run around the other side of the the lake of the sea, that way they can get to Jesus. And he says, y'all ain't following me because of the power. He says, you're following me because you eat of the bread and you're satisfied. Amen? Yeah. Now, I'm just going to tell you something. I, 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 we, we've got a lot of Christians, and, and they think, oh, Lord, is that really where you want me to go? Yeah, okay, we'll just go. We've got a lot of Christians, and they think that we're going to attract people because that we have loud bands, or that because we shout and run and we run around the field and we holler and I'm all for that and I think that's cool because you seldom ever get it too loud for me and I like it when people get excited about God. But I'm going to tell you something, Brother Daniel. The people don't come because that we have miracles. The people don't come because we have power. The people come because there is love. And when you eat of the love of God, then you're satisfied. Brother Mike, the Brother Dewey, you're satisfied. You're satisfied down in your soul. And listen, you know, that's like getting a, that's like getting a good meal and you want to go back and eat some more, amen? And you're satisfied and you don't want anything. I've been on this big kick for about two weeks and I've been eating just nothing but pure hot dog chili from the fountain. Down in Garrett, I've made the girls eat there for almost every day for two weeks. And they're like, where are we going? I was like, I want some hot dog chili. No hot dogs, no bun. I just get me a, a, a bowl of chili and a grilled cheese. And, and he ain't like regular chili, it's hot dog chili. And I want you to know you put some salt on that. And man, that is good eating. Amen. And I want to go back there every day, Brother Dewey, and I want to get a hold of some of that hot dog chili. See, them people on the other side of that sea, they got a hold of something that they wanted to keep a hold of. Amen. And, it, it, and it's great that Jesus said that there. He said, you're not over here because I made the lame walk. And you're not over here because I made the blind to see. But you're over here because I satisfied you on the inside. Amen? Amen. That's why we're here, right? Because we need the bread of life and we're satisfied on the inside. And see, that's the great thing about that bread tonight is because it don't leave us hungry. The truth, the truth. Johnny Cash sang that song back in the 70s, wasn't it? Guys, where he said, What is truth? Wasn't that the, y'all remember that? Talking about Johnny Cash. Is that even legal in the church pulpit? Did it? Brother, Brother Daniel jokes me all the time, says, I sound like Johnny Cash, but anyways. I, but, but he had that song, What is Truth? And listen, I've got truth. Amen? We're going to be preaching on truth the next seven weeks or so. Amen? We're going to be preaching on truth. Because truth is more than just what's written in these pages. Amen? Because those pages wasn't written till long after Jesus was done on the right hand of God after he was resurrected. But yet in John chapter 1, it calls him the Word. Amen? But the Word was always with the Father. Amen? And he was up there. Glory to God. And the Word was truth. Can you say amen? amen. My truth ain't relative to a black and white piece of paper. My truth 
was in the kingdom of heaven. My truth is set upon a throne. My truth come down here as a man and he walked for 33 years and he lived a life and they crucified my truth and they put him on a cross and they killed him and they put him in a grave and three days later truth come out of that grave. Can you say amen? amen. Lord God, that's the kind of bread of life I'm talking about. That truth, when you eat that meal and the, the old timers would say that's the kind of uh, meal that will stick to your ribs. Glory to God. My mother would fix meals and we would eat and we would eat and she would fry five pounds of bacon for breakfast. Amen. I'm not lying to you. Now let me tell you something. When we eat, we eat. Amen. They'd be six of us or eight of us and we'd have six, about 20 inch pieces to, to split among us. We believed in eating. I love my in-laws. My mother-in-law makes the best fried chicken and fried uh, green tomatoes of any woman I've ever eaten in my life. And, but they eat small compared to us. I, I started dating Missy and I went over there and they, they'd they have like one piece of fried chicken a piece. You know, and I'm like, man, we usually devour like half the chicken. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, when, like when we had fried chicken, the population decreased in some farm. You know what I mean? It was, it was, they had to restock shelves. And, and you know, my, my father-in-law, Charlie, he'd say to me, he'd say, uh, man, I know you can eat more than that. I'm like, oh, I'm good, man. I'm good, you know? Because I'm like, I could have, these days I could eat probably every piece of cake put out there, you know. I mean, I, they was, I was a teenager anyways, you know, and, and I could eat it because we believed in eating. And see, those, those, those kind of meals that you get a hold of, that they do more than just hold you over, but they satisfy you. They fill the gaps inside of you. When Kelly was a little girl, we had trouble getting her to eat, and Missy would poke her belly, and she'd say, no, I feel a little soft spot right there. You can put some more food in there. You ain't got that full yet, and Kelly would go, okay, you know, she's about two or three, you're great, you know. But see, that's the way that truth fills us up. There is not a part of us that is not filled up by the truth of God, amen. When you eat of the bread of life, then it fills you up. Every crack and every crevice, it fills you. It nourishes your body more than you realize it does. In, in verse 33... He says, For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Boy, ain't that great? You see, that bread is that truth. That bread is Christ. That bread rent the veil when he died. That way we could have access to the throne of God. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> and it's a pure meal. It's clean. It's holy. There's no leaven in that bread. Amen? Amen? When you get talking about the bread, if you actually go back and look at that root word, and I was looking at this in, in the dictionary earlier today, when you look at that, when they made their bread, oftentimes it was in a solid, either oblong, like we could maybe think about a meatloaf pan, or they made it in a, in a, in a circle, what we call pone. And they said it's about as thick as your thumb. So, you know, you got, you got a piece of bread about that? Maybe that big, I said, big enough to cover a plate. And it was not made to be cut up. It was made to be served whole. Amen? And see, when you eat the bread of life, you're not getting part of what you need. Come on, glory. Amen. You're getting all of what you need. Amen? Amen? And it's that kind of meal that there's no leaven in it. There's nothing bad in it. You know, there's this big movement out there in the world right now that you've got to eat organic, and you've got to eat clean, and you don't want no antibiotics in it and all this stuff. They probably get reason for all that, but that's not what we're on tonight. Because they say that makes you healthier and that's going to make you live longer. See, that's the kind of meal when we eat out of the bread of life. There is no impurities. Amen. It don't raise your cholesterol. It don't put fat on you. Come on, somebody ought to hear me. Uh, it, it, it will nourish your body in the way that it needs to be nourished. And it don't make us sluggish and slow, but it builds us into fine-tuned yeah. soldiers for God that we are equipped and ripped yeah. in spiritual muscle that we can bear the armor of God and do the work of God. When you're eating the bread of life, you don't only get life, but you get strength and you get abundance and you get yeah. power. Somebody ought to hear me tonight. You get you get what you need out of that bread so you can fight for the Lord. And not only are you fighting for the Lord, but you're standing for the Lord that you will not fail. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let's talk about how important eating breakfast is. Amen? I like eating breakfast. That's my favorite meal of the day. Gravy no longer agrees with me. But that's another conversation. 
I agree with gravy all kinds of ways. The gravy don't agree with me. But that's such an important meal. Because you need strength for the rest of the day, amen? Yeah. You gotta have lunch, you gotta have supper. We've got to be eating that bread of life all day, every day. Amen? Amen. I begin to notice as I got a little bit of age on me that I'd eat them big fat and lunches like I used to do. And I used to get you big long sub sandwiches from them greasy spoon restaurants we had around home. Pizza bread, order fries. At one point in time, I was drinking no less than six cans of Pepsi a day. Amen. Come on. If I got a vice in the world, it's a Pepsi. But anyways, uh, and, and I'd eat them, and I began to realize, Brother Ronnie, after lunch, I didn't have no energy. Man, I just as sluggish. I needed a nap. I'd do this. I was like, gosh, oh, man. You used to not bother me, man. When I was 18, I'd done that. I'd work all day on that. I, I got to be about 30, and I'm like, I can't move. What is wrong with me? Well, one of them girls at work finally convinced me that I needed to start eating a little bit better for lunch, so I didn't start getting me salads. Man, I want you to know it made all the difference in the world about how much energy I had to endure the rest of the day and how much energy I had overall. You see, when you eat the complete bread of life, you're not getting stuff that's going to slow you down or stuff that's going to hinder you. You're getting stuff that's going to make you stronger and make you have more energy. It's going to lift your emotions. You know, when you exercise and you eat healthy, you're a happier person. When you're eating the bread of life, glory to God, you're a happier person. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? The bread of life does so much more than just filling your empty stomach. Yes, it yeah. does. There's that, there's that verse in that song, uh, Save His Precious Blood, it will heal your mind and body. Mm -hmm. Amen? People talk about holistic medicine all the time. You know, this herb and that herb and this plant and that plant. You know, then we all got antibiotics, right? Ibuprofen. I'm a big fan of ibuprofen. Not stopping the company. It's good, good, good stuff. Take a lot of that right there. But you see, if I would start exercising, get my arthritis under control, Brother Mike, I can get rid of a lot of my ibuprofen. Mm -hmm. Amen? If I would eat better, Brother Ronnie, get a hold of the right thing, then I could get rid of a lot of my antibiotics and my ibuprofen. Amen? And if I would if I would take better care of myself, and I'm not preaching on nutrition now. I'm preaching on bread of life. Don't get me wrong. Amen? Don't get me wrong. We might start an exercise group after that. That ain't what I'm after. Amen? We're, we're talking about the bread of life. Because when you eat right, your body begins to heal. Amen? When you eat right, your body begins to mend. Yeah. Glory to God. And I want you to know what's broken your spirit tonight. The bread of life can begin to mend it. Can you say amen? amen? I want you to know if you're struggling emotionally, the bread of life can begin to heal you. Glory to God. If you're starved down spiritually, glory to God, the bread of life can begin to strengthen you. Somebody ought to hear me tonight. Amen. Glory to God, the bread of life will provide exactly what you need in exactly the right way to completely amen. fill every void, every crack, every amen. broken part of your body. Somebody ought to hear it tonight. It don't nourish you from the in, from the outside in, but it nourishes you from the inside yeah. out. Come on, somebody yeah. ought to hear me tonight. I've got the bread of life, and if I will eat it, glory to God. Somebody ought to hear me. Ain't that awesome? Yeah. We'll get them old dogs coming to the clinic, and they're strays. <clears throat> ain't nothing but a rack of bones. Can't ever bone they got, not just the ribs. From Mike, you count everything they got. Hip bone sticking up, cow, leg bone, they ain't got no muscle. Old timers believed you'd feel them too much and they'd fall over dead if they got too starved. Don't reckon that's true. I ain't killed one yet, did it? You sent them out a bowl of food, brother Mike, and they get eat. And they'll eat everything you got. You ever seen them eat when they ain't and both starved to death and they'll suck down everything in the bowl? Don't even chew it. You give them another bowl, Sister Sheila, it'll, it'll suck it down too. Come on. Yeah. Give them a third bowl, they might be slowing down depending on the size of the dog and what you give them. They might be starting to catch up. Eventually, the little belly swells out because they got so much food in there, curl up their little rack of bones and their ratty hair, and they're satisfied. Amen? But they need that meal. Didn't leave no gaps. Come on. Well, you start feeding that dog that way, Give it a couple days, glory to God, and then the next thing you know, you can't count the ribs no more. Can you hear me? 
Amen. And then that waistline begins to fill out and you can't see the backbone anymore. Yeah. And then the hips begin to cover up. Come on. And the next thing you know, there ain't no fat on that body, but you got a well-oiled machine and a slick hair coat. Yeah. Oh, somebody ought to hear me tonight. Listen, he said that he, he said he'd come to bring us life and life more abundantly. Amen. And so when we're eating of the bread of life tonight, everything that is wrong and malnourished in our body will begin to heal, Brother Mike, if we will just keep on eating, Brother Dewey. Yeah. Sister Missy, if we're just hanging on and begin to put the bread of life on the inside, you say, are you talking about the Word? I'm going to tell you something. There's no better place to find the Word or to find the bread than in the Word. Can you say yeah. amen? Because in the beginning was the Word and the Word was God and the Word was with God and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Amen? Yeah, amen? And then they put it in the paperback version. Glory. Amen. Took them a little while but they got there. But you think about that tonight, that it nourishes us. Now Peppa got into the Civil Conservation Corps. The three C's as he called it under Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And as a young man went out to Utah, Nevada, and was building dams and whatnot for conservation, and they fed them out there. It was the first time I think my grandfather had ever actually had enough to eat. And he later joined the military, and he really enjoyed their pancakes. And they asked him, one of them was talking about eating one morning, and he said, well, I never got all I wanted. And one of the other soldiers said to him, said, well, Reed said, I said, I always got everything I wanted. He said, I'd go back and give me more and more that boss said, no, no. He said, I didn't say that I didn't get all I could hold. He said, I didn't get all I wanted. Amen? And the thing about the bread of life is, is that while on one hand, we never feel overfull and overstuffed. Right? And we always feel satisfied. But yet, we always want more. Amen? You can never overeat on Jesus. Amen? Come on, you can never overeat on Jesus. And I and I love that. I want to go back to that bread being one whole solid piece right there that it wasn't made to be broken up. Listen, listen, I don't get the luxury. Our kids, sometimes we'll get the kids food and Justin won't eat vegetables at all. And Kelly sometimes won't eat meat. You know, that's just the way they are. Now she'll devour tomatoes, but now when it comes to certain things, now she ain't gonna eat it. Now Justin, Justin, he'll eat just about anything unless it's vegetables. Kelly loves carbs. She'll eat noodles and french fries, potatoes, whatever. You know. And you know, but but Diane, we get that luxury as people. We can say, well, I don't want to eat that. Or I don't want this. I want something else. Amen. But Jesus is a package deal. Amen. 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 I don't get the luxury, Brother Dooley, of ignoring the first part and only accepting the last part. Amen. I don't get the luxury of getting the cream out of the middle of the cookie. Come on, and leaving the top and the bottom of the Oreo. That ain't how that flies when it comes to Jesus. That bread was made to be a solid piece and was not made to be cut or broken, but was made to be eaten in its entirety. Glory to God. Amen. That's even what he made, I believe, John the Revelator do when he told him to rip up, rip up the book and put it in his mouth and eat it. And he said, it was, it was sweet in my mouth, but bitter in my stomach. Glory to God. And listen... It ain't always good what's in here, Brother Mike, because it will challenge us to be better people. It will bring into light what it is that we need to know about ourselves and what it is that we need to know about Jesus. Amen. It'll tell me where I'm wrong. It'll tell me where I'm right. It'll Amen. convict my soul. Come on, somebody ought to hear me tonight. Amen. When I'm eating of the bread of life, it will start purging me of all impurities. If I will eat it all, it'll heal me all. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. He won't just heal what is broken, but it will get out what is unclean. Amen. Yes, he will. The bread of life. I am the bread of life. Boy, you think about that tonight. Ain't that amazing? That just tears me up. It's good food. I don't like going to buffets because I never get everything I want. Brother Mike, I just don't feel like I can get enough for my money. Well, I don't. Just tell you the truth. You see, Jesus is not that way. The more I eat, the more I want. Amen? Amen. And I can't ever get really full. I'm satisfied, but yet I want more. It's a beautiful thing. It's nourishment to our body. Heals the illnesses. Builds our immune system. Amen? Amen. They're wanting us to put Kelly on vitamin C because if she catches everything coming, she'll, she'll flog me in the car later. Dad, why do you talk about me? 
See, there you go. Two million minutes I know she's feeding. We've got to put her on vitamin C because her immune system is complete. And she catches everything coming and going. Amen? But listen, man, when you start eating that right there, Amen. the bread of life, your immune system begins to build. You become durable. You know what? You can withstand temptation. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. You can withstand temptation, number one. Number two, it don't even tempt you anymore. Amen? Amen? Amen. It, it, it just thinks that you can withstand it. It'll just be gone. Amen? Yeah. When that immune system's right and working, then, then you're immune to all kinds of tricks of the enemy. You won't even be as sensitive as a Christian as you used to be. You'll be a hearty, healthy Christian. You can stand a little criticism. I like it. Look at Isaiah where he said, I'll set your face as a flint. Amen? You get that out of that. You ever eat those meals? If you want it, Sean. Huh? If you want it. If you want it. See, there's the problem. If you want it. You got to eat of it if you want it. I mean, you, you got to want it. If you don't want it, then you ain't going to eat it. Amen? Yeah. But I'm going to tell you something. If you're only eating part of it, it ain't, it ain't going to work for you. You ever eat those meals where the flavor is so good that you don't want to take another bite of anything and mess it up? You ever done that? Come on. You all know what I'm talking about. Listen, I like to eat. You want to know how much I like to eat? 49 hot wings at one time. That's how much I like to eat. It was a little bit of a dare. But anyways... You know, I like to eat, man. I counted my calories, and me and Missy was married down at UK after one of my classes in college. I was doing easy 3,500 a day without effort. And with maintaining my body, I like to eat. I'll get the biggest burger on me, and I've slowed down. My waist can't do that anymore, man. I can't. I can't. Uh, I don't mind metabolism. ain't what it used to be. Um, and, and I can't do that. I, I, and me and Missy... Listen, we got married and we would sit down and we would we would take two pounds of hamburger meat and we would make four hamburgers out of two pounds of hamburger meat and eat that and fries. And it stopped me, man. I mean, I, I I can eat. I like to eat, okay? A lot. But there's occasionally you get those meals and that flavor is just so good in your mouth that you don't want to ruin it with anything else. Amen? Because you're satisfied. Your stomach's full and your mouth is good, and you're like, gosh. It's true. Now, you all just will get Dewey. Like, Dewey knows that you do it. Have you been there? Have you been there? Hey, Amen. There. It's good stuff. And see, Jesus is like that right there. If I truly am loving what I'm eating, and I'm loving how it's wanting me, or how it's leaving me full, then, Brother Daniel, I'm not going to ruin it with anything else in my mouth. Come on. I'm not going to be eating of anything else in the world. Come on. I don't want nothing. If I'm truly satisfied with the bread of life, then I don't want nothing to ruin that flavor in my mouth. You want to know You want to know what it's going to do when you eat something that ruins the flavor in your mouth? It's going to curdle on your stomach. You ever drink orange juice and drink milk at the same time? It's like instant fermentation in your stomach or something. You know, it curdles or it's not good, okay? You wonder why else I don't eat besides the fact my metabolism is toast? It's because I have acid reflux. Okay? And you ever had, anybody ever had acid reflux really bad? You ever spit acid before? And that sounds like a disgusting thing to talk about in the pulpit. It looks like a wasp, but isn't it? He needs Jesus too. Okay. The, uh, I don't know, that or like love it. I don't like the like it. Yeah, I like to stink about it. Yeah. That's what it is. I was going to go with the episode of the Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> yeah, that's fine on us. That's fine on us. But I, the, one of the latter times that we did Buffalo Wild Wings was down little when I had got something particularly hot. And I was laying there sleeping that night, and I come up choking, spitting on acid, coming out my nose and in my mouth. And I want you to know that hydrochloric acid in your stomach with a pH of something like three will take the hide off of everything it touches. I was, I don't know how long, trying to catch my breath. <laughs> and I'm serious, you know? And, and it like my nose is burning, my mouth is burning, my throat's burning. Water, sure, in the world, no hell. Just let me tell you, it was bad. You want to know what happens when you start trying to eat half of the bread of life 
and some of the world. Come on. It does not mix. And you will suffocate as a Christian on your own acid reflux. Come on. You'll kill yourself out as a Christian if you're not trying to if you're trying to eat anything other than the bread of life. Amen. Listen, the world needs to know what we have. The world needs to know what we have. I have access to the bread of life. I'm eating of the bread of life. Amen? Amen. They're not after my power. I ain't got it. You know what I mean? They ain't after my power. They ain't after my speaking in tongues. Just being honest with you guys. They ain't after that. Don't get me wrong. You know I believe in that. I'm a firm believer in that. And I want that because it's part of what we do. It's got its place. 110%. The Spirit should have preeminence over everything other than the Word of God. Amen? Yeah. <clears throat> and, but they're not after the Holy Ghost, Brother Mike. Brother Dewey, they're after something else. Because they're starving. And they're skinny. And their hair coat's ragged. And they've been eating what they can find off the ground so long that their body's malnourished and their will is broken. Somebody out here, you know, come on. And they're hurting and they're abandoned out on the side of the road by maybe the only people they thought they were loving. Oh, I tell you, I, some of them dogs come in the clinic and I, it's not as bad as it used to be from that standpoint. I don't see so many stars anymore. But they come in there and they just bless their hearts, Daniel, they just curl up in that cage and they're humped up and they're scared, a little tail tucked between their leg and nothing but a rack of bones and dehydrated, eat up with worms, hair falling out, and you speak a kind word to them and that little tail goes just a wiggle, just the end of it. Not the whole thing, just the end of it. And you give them a good meal, Brother Mike, and you come back a little bit later and they're standing on their feet and they're wagging that tail because they're wanting more. Can you hear me? Amen. And the more that you feed them the bread of life, glory to God, the more that they grow, the more that they tail wax, the more that they flourish, the more that they want what we already have. Can you say amen? amen. They need the bread of life, man. They need the I am. Come on. Amen. Jesus is the answer, guys. We know this. We know it ain't drugs. We know it ain't sex. We know it ain't all these other things that we've all tried, trying to fill our gaps and fill our holes. Amen? It's the bread of life. That's what we need. The bread of life. And they're not, when we, he said, if my name be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Amen? That's better than McDonald's gold arches right there, man. We passed them, the kids would be in their, in their car seats and Justin was just a little itty bitty thing. Couldn't talk. But we'd go past the golden arches and he'd go, hmm. <laughs> Hey, man. He go, mm, what did you miss? It was great. It was great. Mm. And me and Missy couldn't do nothing but laugh, you know. Mm. I mean, he didn't say nothing. I mean, I don't know that he never spoke a word, but he knew what those things were. Amen. <laughs> and let me tell you something. That right there is what that cross ought to mean to the world. That, that right there is what that cross ought to be to the world. Those people all say, oh, pass that by. They say, man, I'm starving to death. i got to get something. Amen. I, I, I got to give that. Oh, oh, Esau come in so hungry that he was willing to sell his entire inheritance and blessing from his father to be able to get a bowl of porridge. Amen. There ought to be such love in the cross of Christ that people are willing to give up anything in the world Amen. to get a piece of the bread of life. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something, guys. It's up to us to show up. See, we don't, have the, we don't have the luxury of just saying, okay, here's the cross, here's the church, here's my Bible, I'm a good Christian. That's not that, how that works, man. I'm serving on the buffet line of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm serving that bread. Of, it's a small menu. Glory to God. But it fits all the needs. Amen. It don't matter whether you get a combo meal number one, two, or three. You're going to be getting the bread of life. Amen? Amen. And it even said in that verse right there, he said you wouldn't be hungry or you wouldn't thirst. Neither one. Don't even need a biggie coat with that right there. You just need the bread of life. Amen? Amen. And it's up to me to serve that to the people. 
But more than it's up to me to serve it, it's up to me to eat it. Amen? Amen. I am the bread of life. Amen? Amen? Going back to that I am he. Boy, I tell you, that's powerful, man. Blowed off their feet because he just simply said, I am he. What would happen if he just said, get away? I mean, you, you, you know what I'm saying? He, there was that much power in his voice that said, I am he, they collapsed. What if he said, get away? You know, I mean, what, what would have happened? <laughs> well, they probably would. They probably about did anyway. And but you you think about those things, and and what we have, guys. Listen, if you're struggling in your life right now, in any shape, form, or fashion, the answer is the bread of life. You just need to simply eat more of the bread of life. The Lord had me preach a message several, several, several months ago. That the answer is simply that I need more of God. Amen. Whatever the problem is, I need more of God. Amen. Amen. If I've got hatred, I need more of God. If I'm, if I'm depressed, I need more of God. Somebody ought to hear me. Amen. Amen. We just need more of the bread of life. Amen. Amen. Whatever your problem is, that's what you got to have is the bread of life. People, people say this all the time. And I even pray this sometimes. Lord, I need more power. Lord, I, uh, I need more of your spirit. Lord, I need more of this. I need more of that. I just need more of Jesus. And that comes a total package. Amen? Amen? If I'll be more like Jesus, then I'll get everything else that I need. Amen? Amen. How about we give God a hand clap of praise. Amen.